shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcoxon, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor. This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, hello, and Richards, Carter Wilcoxon here, joined again by my spectacular co-host, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, uh, Tim James. Tim, how are you, bud? Hey, dude, I'm doing really good. Um, been traveling a lot. Uh, I got pictures of my kids uh, with huge fish from Alaska, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I went to Bend with my nieces, and for some reason, everywhere I go, there's mosquitoes. I just like <laughs> I can't get away from them. But um, we've we've been having a good time, and I'm really excited about the show today because today, guys, we have a really special guest uh, who's near and dear to me. It's our our, our formulator at ChemicalFreeBody.com, Dr. Scott Treadway. So this is a man who, you know, back in the day when I was trying to find a really good lab just to manufacture my products correctly, which you'd be surprised how hard that is. You know, I went over, over through over 30 labs to find uh, Dr. Treadway and everything I was looking for. It was like, check, 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 check. And he's not only become um, our formulator and a mentor, but uh, you know, somebody that's a close personal friend and I would consider family. So Scott, Hey buddy, thanks for being here today. Hey, it's great to be with you and with Carter. And I'm really happy to be on this uh, nice platform that you have here and, uh, and to see you guys. So, yeah, well, I'm I'm really excited uh, for our um, our guest today too, uh, Dr. Scott Treadway. Uh, this, this is really the first time on the Health and Wealth Podcast Show that we've had um, more of a, a health advisor, someone that's really in that space. And, and I know you wear multiple hats at all times. And uh, what I what I want to go ahead and do for our audience, who we call the Enrichers. And we, we call them that because we want to enrich them with knowledge of information on health, all things health and wealth. Um, but I've heard a little bit personally because Tim and I have gone back now. This is, uh, I think, we're in, the, we're in the 20s now for shows. Can you believe that, Tim? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. But, um, you know, Tim has talked a, a lot about you, and, and I've heard a little bit about the backstory. But if you don't mind, share with our, our audience, you know, you know, your backstory and, and however far back you want to go, you know, if that goes all the way back to childhood, if it goes back to high school or whatever it was, it kind of sort of sent you down the path of where you're at today. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. So, yeah, I was going to say that uh, just just one comment up front, which is uh, all the wealth in the world doesn't do you any good unless you're healthy. So, <laughs> Amen. But, uh, yeah, so I, I got I got started basically. um I was always interested in biology. I thought I was going to go to medical school, and and uh, but I was really interested in nutrition. So even in high school, and um, so you know, uh, when I got married later on, I went through military for a little while, and I got married, and then uh, my son had hyperactivity. So that was something that really motivated me because it had to do with my, uh, you know, my my son and my family. And uh, so, you know, we were looking around for things and I was dealing with uh, my personal physician at that time was a pretty good person, Dr. Gerber. Of, uh, he was uh, head of the um, uh, of a supplement company, and, but also a um, really knowledgeable person. And I also uh, I'm talking, you know, right now I'm talking about like 50 years ago. So wow. it's a while. You're, you're aging yourself here a little bit, Doc. But the point is that, um, you know, I, I had that experience. So, you know, we were looking for something and we had to have something organic for him. And I wanted a, a vegetable source because I knew that was going to absorb better into his body. So we needed a calcium source. And um, actually, I got turned on. It probably a lot of people, I think, have heard of Dr. Bronner. Um, and, and the original Dr. Bronner, uh, he's gone. His grandson is actually running the company, but he had um, uh, kind of mentored me for a while and uh, really a real character. I mean, this guy was really something. I uh, met him up actually in uh, Escondido, California, and he had a, 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 a spiral staircase that went up to his roof. And then he would be laying out there and the guy was like he was black. I mean, he's, a, you know, originally from Germany and he had a German accent, but his skin was just so dark and everything. 
uh, just from all the tanning, you know, that he had daily because he really liked to, to lay in the sun and he got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, vitamin D, I guess, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> things that he got. And, uh, and so he kind of mentored me and he said, yeah, okay, well, uh, you know, I'll help you get this, uh, this calcium. And we found a source of organic calcium from vegetable source. Because what happens uh, with normal calcium, it doesn't absorb. It's basically made of rocks. You know, this uh, calcium comes from sandstone and it comes from coral and it comes from uh, eggshells and all kinds of things. And so the body doesn't digest that stuff. I mean, it just makes common sense. A lot of the things I say probably will be like common sense things, but it's it's also a, a fact that the body doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't digest rocks. I mean, that's just just, just uh, the way it is. So um, so he got me uh, hooked on that, and then I, I started to make uh, that product, and then eventually I got um, some financing, and I, and I set up a my first factory back in San Rafael, California. <laughs> And uh, we made these organic supplements. So there was something called Golden Epic at that time. It was the first time, actually, as far as I know, in, in the U.S. or the world, where you, you had a completely pure uh, line of uh, food supplements that there were, where there was no synthetics. In other words, everything was from a food source, and we had specific food sources for the various vitamins and minerals and so on. Um, Later on, my wife actually got sick, too. This was uh, some years later, maybe 15 years later, and um, she had breast cancer. So another thing that I got into was uh, there's a lady called Ann Wigmore who wrote uh, Be Your Own Doctor. And um, this was, again, quite a, quite a few years ago, maybe 25 years, uh, 30 years ago. And uh, so, you know, I had to do something. And so we got her on wheatgrass juice, and this was Ann Wigmore's whole approach to um, to cures for cancer. And uh, so, you know, I, I built like a, uh, I guess it looks like a phone booth, and it has little shelves, you know, you can stick in the trays, and you have maybe an inch of, of soil, and then you can grow your wheatgrass. And then you can sort of rotate that. So I had seven shelves, one for each day, and I pulled it out. And so anyway, we did this thing, and you have a wheatgrass juicer, which is kind of like a special specialty juicer, just basically like a meat grinder with a cap on it. And uh, if you can have an electric one, which I had, and then you get this fresh juice that is just like chemotherapy. I mean, it's amazing. It's still amazing, and it still works. It's still a cure for a lot of things. And um, we had her on that for nine months, and she originally had, uh, uh, you know, metastasis and uh, calcifications and the whole thing. And nine months later, it was nothing, zero. Wow. So I said, "Gal, well, this is, uh, you know, now, now, now I know I'm doing the right thing." So uh, that was my experience with uh, the two, probably the two closest people in my family, and that was a big motivation for me. And after that, I went to India and I studied uh, Asian medicine. Um, specifically Ayurvedic medicine, and then uh, came back and continued my studies here in the U.S. and uh, also maintained these uh, this, this factory. And then later on, I got so busy, um, I just took base basically an interest in in uh, in a couple of factories that I have now and um, our facilities for you know uh, creating these these uh, different kinds of products. But they're all natural, what I call naturally occurring meaning like like Tim's products are all naturally occurring. Uh, so everything is is coming from a plant source or a fruit source, some kind of vegetable source. And uh, we just don't need any synthetics in our life, you know. And the nice thing is that today it's really possible to have really powerful uh, nutraceuticals. And what, what I mean by that is that the whole pharma industry got started many years ago, let's say, the turn of the last century, um, 19, early 1900s. And it was uh, it, before that, you know, if we're looking at 150 years ago, everything came from and, and, and going back 300 years, 2000 years, 5000 years, 10,000, everything came from natural sources anyway, all the medicines, that's what I'm saying. So uh, that that's true even today, the, the pharmacies send their, uh, quote, medicine men down, you know, to 
Brazil or the Amazon or someplace, and they interview shamans and they try to get information uh, on what's, uh, you know, what works, what doesn't work um, for indigenous people, for indigenous medicine. Then they take that, uh, they take those things, they take it back to the lab and then they they do an analysis on it. They find the actives that are inside of that uh, thing that work well, let's say for arthritis or whatever it is. And uh, then they patent those molecules, you know, or the compounds, I should say, a bunch of molecules, you know, all together. And, and uh, then they, they go through the process, you know, FDA and all that. And so, you know, maybe a year or two later, then they have their patented medicine, and they bring it out. But that's synthetic. It's isolated. It's, it uh, always has side effects. Everything that's synthetic has side effects. So, um, you know, but I'm also sitting on the shoulders of people that have done these things in the past, like Royal Lee back in the 50s, who spent his whole life, you know, just trying to to uh, make this point that uh, we shouldn't have synthetic vitamins. We shouldn't have synthetic nutrients because they're all drugs. And they're actually hurting the body where, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. You go into a health food store and you look on the shelf and here's all this synthetic stuff. Um, and it's, you know, there's just rarely that you find some, some there, there are a few things, but you find some things that are that are coming from natural sources, nutrients that are coming from natural sources. But most of it's just junk. You know, it's just all synthetic. Well, let, let, let's give let's What's give that listeners- even doing in it. Let's give the listeners just a little um, idea about how bad it is. So 85% of all the supplements in the marketplace are made by pharmaceutical companies. So let's just be clear on that. They're going to give you a single molecule drug one way or the other where they do it. And and uh, as Viagra or whether it's metformin when you got diabetes or it's going to be Nature Boy Vitamin C, you know, I don't know. I'm just making the name up, but, you know, but that'll be ascorbic acid. It won't be the naturally occurring vitamin C from the omla berry or from the arceola cherry or from the camu camu berry. So this is what people need to understand. Now, if you look at the supplement industry in total, 92% of all supplements are synthetic. You don't want those. Only 8% are whole food or food based. And more and more of those today are actually getting blended with synthetics as well. So we have a problem. So like, Finding a company like ours is is like a needle in a haystack, like literally, because then it gets it's not just, you know, the whole food source eliminating the synthetics. Then we have to look at the other ingredients. Right, Scott, because the other ingredients are still ingredients that you're consuming. And then we have things like magnesium stearate and silicon dioxide and dicalcium phosphate. Uh, Silicon dioxide is an example. Level three toxin on the EPA's toxin list yet. It's in most supplements. So go check your supplements right now. Look for magnesium stearate. Is, you know, look for uh, silicon dioxide, di- dicalcium phosphate. Or if you have calcium, maybe your doctor's conned you into you have a b- uh, bonus to use osteoporosis, osteoporosis, osteopenia. No, you have a weight resistance uh, deficiency, a weight lifting deficiency. That's what's going to build your bones, that and good sleep. And if you do need calcium, Scott would point you to Arjuna Bark, right? Not ground up chalk or ground yeah. up oyster yeah, shells. Exactly which is going to cause hardening of the arteries, gallstones, and kidney stones. So, But the uneducated, unsuspecting, trusting public that are decent people go into a store, go into a health food store, they think they're purchasing something good for them, and they're actually lowering their immune system. And this is not it, – it's just – it's silly. It's just – the whole thing is ridiculous, but we are on a mission to uh, educate people about this, aren't we, Scott? Oh, absolutely, we are. I mean, that's uh, – mm-hmm. I, I think we're – we're helping to, um, uh, there's a lot of change in the industry because what's happening right now, <clears throat> excuse me, is that, you know, we're having this, this, this transition that we're all going through now, but people are becoming aware. I mean, this whole thing that happened with the, with the crazy COVID stuff, you know, it actually made uh, people aware of how important health is and, and why uh, we have to have strong immune systems and why we have to sort of you know, come back to nature in the sense of um, uh, uh, our, our supplements, our food, our diet, everything that that uh, that you do as coaching, Tim. And you know, it's just really important. It's it, it's uh, uh, something that um, you know that's that it's been around. We're talking seventy years now. I understand. Back in World War II, the intentions were good because the idea was 
you know, this let's have this K rations for these these poor guys that are out in the field, you know, in Guadalcanal or something fighting, you know, in World War Two, you know, they had to uh, they had to have some some decent nutrition to keep going. Right. I mean, that's that's just what soldiers need. You know, you have the army go. Uh, travels on its stomach, they say, meaning that, you know, you have to have decent nutrition for, for everybody and keep them healthy. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. how can they fight? You know, it doesn't, doesn't make, doesn't work. So, uh, but, so the intentions were good, but what they based all of the um, testing on, everything that was done in terms of like the recommended daily allowances that we see now today, all of that stuff and the food pyramid and all that, it was all a lot of it was just based on synthetic testing. And so you, you can't really uh, do that. In other words, you can't say how much synthetics does your body need? It doesn't need any zero. It needs zero synthetics, you know. And so uh, we need to redo this whole thing. Uh, we need to, you know, have a, have new testing based on naturally occurring products and so on, because if you have a naturally occurring vitamin C, for example, um, you're going to need a lot less of that than you would a synthetic. Why is that? Because if you bring a synthetic into the body, the body says, oh, you, you, you gave me, the body's very, very intelligent. I mean, the, the intelligence of your body, we don't even think about it because our systems are working automatically and, you know, we just take it all for granted, but it's, it's, it's freaking miraculous. I mean, that's just the way it is. So if, if we take a, a, a synthetic vitamin C into our body, the body says, oh, great, you, you gave me uh, some vitamin C. I, I, I like that. But wait a minute, it's isolated. Oh, I have to bring this and that and, and I have to create a whole vitamin C out of this partial synthetic that you put into my body. Well, it doesn't uh, you know, that's just a lot of work for the body to do. So it'll use very tiny, tiny amount, you know, maybe less than one percent of uh, what you put in there. You put a thousand milligrams in there, it might use, you know, five, you know, but if you're using a whole vitamin C uh, and your body needs that, it'll uptake whatever it needs and it'll expel the rest, but it'll uptake the whole vitamin C much more uh, efficiently and it's much more bioavailable than this this other junk, which is just synthetics. You know, it's as, it's as if, uh, you know, uh, why, why would we uh, think that our body would not recognize a synthetic? Huh? So, our, 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 you know, our body knows the truth about nutrition. We don't have to, you know, teach ourselves, you know, uh, uh, on a micro level somehow. Uh, you know, uh, the body already knows what, what's, what's good for us. So all we have to do is just put the right things uh uh, make things available to us in terms of nutrition and everything. Uh, and we're done. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's um, awesome. Go ahead, Carter. Uh, yeah. I, I, let me just jump in because uh, as you were talking about a few different things, it just triggered a few ideas and thoughts in my head as, as a parent. One of the things that I kind of want to go back in your story a little ways, because this first segment for our enrichers is really about, you know, you and how you got to where you're at and everything. And you, and you emphasize in the very beginning a condition that your son had. Now I had, I, I, I have a 14 year old son myself. You know, he's, he's a, like most of us kids at 14, you know, with boys, the three of us, right. We were all three 14 year olds at one time, you know, you're just, you're blowing and going and you, you know, you're so active and, you know, um, but I, I'm just curious if you don't mind, talk a little bit more about that, your son's condition that, that compelled you to get really going in the direction you're at. Yeah. Okay. Great question. So he had, uh, um, he was diagnosed with ADD, in other words, uh, attention deficit disorder. So, and some age. And this was, and this was 50 years ago. Yeah. Well, okay. yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's, that's the time when it was unusual. I mean, yeah. 50 years ago, we didn't have a lot of kids with ADD and, uh, you know, um, uh, all, all these different diseases that we have now. It's just they weren't there. And so I think that has a, a lot to do with the fact that we've our soils have been depleted, the fact that our, our diets have been, um, you know, contaminated with all kinds of chemicals and, the, uh, you know, just the, the, the general problems of uh, contamination everywhere in the world. But 
at that time, yeah. Then, and I'm talking about, you know, our, our personal physician was, he was very aware of, of things. He was kind of advanced in that sense. So he said, hey, your son has ADD. I said, well, you know, what can we do about that? And he says, well, you know, I've changed the diet. And so, so we put him on a very strict diet. Uh, we also noticed he was, you know, chewing a lot of gum and eating things like Skittles and all this stuff that had synthetic colors, synthetic um uh, you know, flavors. And so we got them off all of that junk, basically. And that, that, that was like half the battle right there, just, just changing his diet. And then we got him onto the, um, onto the calcium so that he had, uh, you know, cause it's really good for the nervous system to have good, uh, basic vegetable source calcium. Uh, Scott, to- tell him how, tell him how you got the calcium, where you got it from. It's really cool. <laughs> this is a really cool story. Yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, actually, you know, it's from Dr. Bronner, as I was saying before, but um, he, he actually, uh, it's, we're, we're not getting it from there anymore. But at that time, Campbell's Soup actually had uh, a sediment that was created when they made their soups. And I'm talking about like the vegetable soups, you know, where they had like tomato and potatoes and carrots and all that kind of stuff in it. So they had a kind of a, uh, like a, uh, an orange sediment. This is what it kind of looked like to me. And uh, so we took that and we dried it out and it turned out it was like almost 80% calcium, uh, naturally occurring wow. calcium. So, so this was like the leftovers after they make the soup in the yeah. bottom of the vats. Yeah. yeah. They were just, and they, were, they were, they were, they were, they were throwing it away and Scott's like, Hey, I'd like to buy that from you. They're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. okay. Really? Well, how much would you like? We have tons of this stuff. I said, <laughs> <laughs> we're just throwing it out anyway. <laughs> yeah. Free product. So it was kind of, a, yeah, it was almost free, actually. It was pretty cheap, you know, to begin with. And then they tried to jack up the price on us later. But anyway, it, it was a, it was an interesting source. Um, so, yeah. So uh, at that time, uh, and so he was fine, you know, after a few, like a month or so, he was just fine. And, and uh, you know, but I, I just, we realized that he was sensitive, you know, he was a sensitive yep. uh, uh, kind of person. And he's, you know, he had a good start. I mean, we put him on uh, uh, when he was very young. We, we we fed him after he was weaned and s- stopped breastfeeding. He had uh, goat's milk, fresh goat goat's milk. We were living in L.A. at the time, actually, and uh, out on Pico. I don't know if people know where this is. It's near like where the 20th Century Fox uh, place is. Anyway, um, and uh, so we got we were able. There was a, a dairy there called Altadena. And they were they were able to deliver daily fresh goat's milk, and that stuff made him like so strong. It's like his immune system was super super strong, even though he wow. had this thing later on with the uh, you know the ADD. But we fixed that. But yeah, it was just like he never gets sick. It's almost it's almost amazing. So um, and uh, we, you know I, so another thing I tried to do at that time that was like 1980. I tried to make a, um, I wanted a super baby formula, you know, so we could have Superman everywhere. <laughs> Not really, but, <laughs> but so that we could have really, you know, strong kids and healthy kids. Because uh, back at that time, and even today, if you look at the general infant formulas, it's just junk. You know, they put in some soy powder and it's probably GMO. And then they put in sugar, which is like high fructose corn syrup, GMO. You know, it's just junk. And uh, so I said, nah, this is all junk. And, you know, let me see if I can make something that would be really great. And um, the FDA at that time had just changed the law. So I kind of bumped up against them. They said, hey, you can't make that. You know, I said, what? And they said, no, you can't make it. And I said, OK, well, because yeah. they're going to, you know, when they're uh, when they're telling you that you can't make something, they're serious, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of like. Yeah, running up against uh, things that you know that are that have been happening for a long time in big pharma and all that. I'm not going to get. Uh, we don't have to get too deep into that. But uh, at, at this point, I think you know we're becoming educated. Uh, that's this whole thing. Uh, maybe uh, we were talking before about decentralization. I think that now with all this information, the internet, things like we're doing today, talking just off the cuff and and just being honest with each other and talking about things. I think that um, this is what's what's helping us make this transition, you know, and awesome. 
into better health, into a better world, because it's, um, you know, it's bringing this, it's bringing the information about health to, to, to every individual. And we're, we're responsible for our own health. I mean, when it comes down to it, right. We're, yep. we're the, and, and so anybody that's, um, you know, trying to kind of withhold this thing, you know, this, this whole idea, like when I was growing up, I mean, doctors were like God, you know, you had to, you know, bow down to them, do exactly what they told you. And you never asked any questions. You said, yes, sir. You know, I'll, whatever you say, you know, I'll do exactly what you say. Now, if you do that today, you know, then you get vaccinated, you get all kinds of drugs and you, you can actually get into a black hole of, uh, you know, of problems that, 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 that are difficult to, to get out of. So, uh, you know, it's it's up to us to take care of ourselves. I mean, that's that's, you know, self-help is the main thing. Not that we don't have great emergency care, because I know we do. I'm, I'm not really down on drugs in the sense that, you know, if I have an accident, you know, if I get run over by a bus or whatever it is, man, take me to the hospital. Give me everything. You know, help me through. All, I want I want to live. You know, I want to be alive. So but after that, I'm going to detoxify and I'm going to get back on a, uh, you know, a good diet and take take good uh, food supplements and uh, do whatever I can, you know, for anti-aging and and for general health on a daily basis. So yeah, what you're talking about there really is just a, a paradigm shift. And I know we're going to talk about paradigm shifts here coming up uh, in, in the next segment. So I, I, I just wanted to get a little bit more backstory on. You know your son and what sent you down that path because as a, a father of a you know a, a young son who is very active and you know you hear ADD ADHD or whatever uh, I just I just remember that's how I was when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, he was just a, a ball of, and he's always been, and now he's a, now he's uh, put it to use as an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, this is a good time to take a break. Well, when we get back, guys, we're going to get into like the consolidation of products with, um, you know, big industry, big, big tech, big government and how that's affecting us, the consumers, to be able to get good products, good service, good music, um, good art. It's it's literally becoming a lost art trying to find these things. We'll be right back. Are you concerned about being able to get all of your affairs in order during this trying time? Are you troubled by what would happen if you ever became incapacitated? Maybe you've been procrastinating in the past to address these issues, but now, more than ever before, you know just how important it is to get everything documented. Well, don't worry, because we can get you taken care of right from the comfort of your own home. Welcome to the revolutionary My Life Card Plan Estate Plan Processing Platform, home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. We are very pleased you are here, and rest assured, we can offer you a complete estate planning experience regardless of where in the 50 states you may live. Our unique transformational system combines efficiency, convenience, and professional support at levels you never thought possible for setting up your estate plan. Moreover, we will provide you with powerful, user-friendly dynamics that put you in total control of your plan throughout your lifetime. Call us today at 888-316-6040 or go to www.csifinancialgroup.com and our team of specialists will be there to assist you every step of the way. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. Today in the house, we've got uh, one of my favorite people in the world, Dr. Scott Treadway. Um, one of his companies, Meta Organics. He has a supplement company like ours at chemicalfreebody.com. And he is our formulator. So, you know, we're getting good stuff from him. Scott, um, you have a really cool backstory. I like it how, you know, your son was kind of had some issues and you end up going to Campbell Soup Company and getting their leftovers and making supplements out of it and healing him. Now, of course, guys, this is before they that big company, you know, went rogue and put a bunch of crap in their food and stuff like that. But it's it's kind of funny when you th I was thinking about it earlier when you're talking about it, it's like they're making the soup 
and most of the nutrition was it sinks to the bottom and then they're throwing it away right and you wonder look back at that time it, 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 the whole economy was moving towards canned goods and this was really cool and grocery stores came out and people thought wow this is the really cool thing i if i have a steak dinner and i get to go to the grocery store then i'm i'm really living a high life here and that was the beginning of our well the destruction of our health basically because we were letting corporations getting in between us and our food source nature like what we need to do is like every other wild creature the healthier the closer we are to picking food ripe right out of nature and eating it that's what we're supposed to do like how fun is it guys have you guys ever been on a vacation like you go to hawaii or something and like you pick an, a, an avocado falls off a tree and you eat it like or you're picking berries right or you pick an apple or an orange off the tree and eat it it's freaking good or a tomato in your aunt's garden like i remember when i was in hawaii one time taking a shower in an outdoor shower and literally an avocado hit me in the head <laughs> and I looked up and I was like, holy crap. And the whole tree was this old, big ass, huge tree. And it was full of avocados. And I, I, I looked down on the ground. There was a couple more down there. And I picked up the one that just fell. And I remember what Dr. Clement said. He said, as soon as fruit r falls, that's when it's at its peak enzyme level. And it was at, right. So here I am in the morning, you know, I don't want to really eat stuff, but um, I'm like, man, this, this avocado is at its peak. So I'm like, I ate some of it and then I took it, the rest of it and I mashed it up and I put it all over my hair and I put the avocado all over my body and stuff. And I took this outdoor shower in Hawaii with this avocado falling on my head and I just had a, a good old time. But so the, what I wanted to get into now is Dr. Treadway um, and I'll kind of set this up and then I'll let you talk m most of the time about it. But is that and, and Carter, feel free to join in, um, is that uh, uh, the this, this centralization of everything. So you know, people in power, what they want is power, profits and control. Right. And, you know, we, we want truth, freedom and health, kind of the polar opposite of that. Right. So people that want power, profits and control are into centralization. They want about five companies to sell us everything and they want to dumb us down and say, here, you get this, you get that. And that, that's your only choice. Think about it. You walk into a, 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 a grocery store, what are you going to walk out of there with? Whatever the hell's in that store. Whatever's on the shelf, you walk yep. into uh, go see a stockbroker. What are you going to walk out with? Stocks, what bonds, and mutual got? funds. Yeah. You're probably not going to. They're probably not going to have a, a, a an annuity for you, right? Um, if you go to a, a baker, they're going to bake something. If you go to a, a surgeon, they're going to cut. That's what they're going to do. A surgeon's not going to probably start recommending herbs, right? That would be an herbalist, mm -hmm. right? So we have to pay attention to what's really going on around us in our environment and what's happening in the grocery stores. As an example is uh, most people, a lot of people shop at Whole Foods. It was started by a, a, a couple, I believe, and they grew it up. Great story. And then Amazon bought them a little while back, right? Well, since then, have you noticed in Amazon that the organic 365 brand has been growing and growing and growing and growing and it's taken over? It's just like, it's, they're like, it's like Tribbles, if you ever watch Star Trek. <laughs> so, you know those little fuzzy things? You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, most people, maybe they don't know. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, these things, are like they grow like rabbits, right? So this organic 365 brand is everywhere. So what's the problem with that? Nobody really thought about that. Well, the problem is, is that when you see organic 365 brand, that is the destruction of America. That is destroying the fabric of what America is all about. And what America is all about is that the best artist – and the best musicians and the best people inventing products and the best people giving the best service in their industry are being stifled. They are not allowed to get their stuff out. The best music, the best art. We're not seeing all this stuff. We're not seeing the best products. So here's why. Let's say uh, the three of us guys, we start a, um, uh, a supplement company together. Okay. And we get it in Whole Foods. And that supplement starts rocking and rolling and they people just start selling it and we get more shelf space. And before too long, we've, we have went uh, regional and then we went national and we're on all Whole Foods and we're just rocking it. Whole Foods is watching all that stuff. They collect data on everything that sells in those shelves. That shelf space is very valuable space, very valuable. Now, if that product sells, then they look at the ingredients and they will simply they'll do one of two things. They will either go to the manufacturer and cut a deal with them and cut you out. Or if you're making it yourself, then they will just take those ingredients, cheapen it, put in the crappiest, cheapest ingredients you can, wrap it in a label, put that in that shelf space, and you're gone. So you see, they 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 slam you. Now, in the medical community, the same thing's happening. They, they all control this with money. Physicians 
when they came out of medical school, have about two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars in student loans. Am I right, Scott? It's a big amount. It's a huge amount, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then with the, yeah. all the laws and the paperwork and stuff, they have to hire like three assistants out of the gate just to fill out the paperwork. So they can't afford it. So they're forced to work at big hospitals. And then you don't get that individual care that you used to, like we were talking about one person, you're having a personal relationship with your physician. You know, you'd call your physician, they'd come to the house, they knew you, they knew your family. They were involved. They, they weren't capped at three or five minutes to talk to you. Otherwise, they would get fined or get in trouble, right? Because they have to, they, they are not allowed to spend time with you. They get in, write a prescription, and get out and write another one, right? So this is where we're at today. I really want, I want to talk about this um, centralization of products, the loss of art, music, good products, and good service. Scott, maybe you can digress on this. But... Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right on. And, you know, I, I grew up in the 50s. And back then I was, uh, you know, just to give you an example, like I, I even remember this, like I was probably four years old. And, uh, you know, I, I, went, I decided to walk down the sidewalk and I, and I got lost. And some uh, neighbor was, I guess, was watching me or something. And I was trying to figure out how to get back to my house. And uh, he came out and he said, well, you know, what are you doing? You know, and I, he, he says, uh, yeah, I know, I know where you live. You know, let me, t-. and he took my hand, you know, and led me back t- to my house. And I mean, it's just like in those days you had the mom and pop stores. Uh, you could go down to the hardware store. You could go down to the food store and there were people that you knew. I mean, these were like, you know, mom and pop stores. Like it wasn't, everything was in a big box. So we've seen this centralization aspect growing over these over the years, and now it's grown to the point, to, like you were saying before. I mean, we have just a few companies own everything. What is it? Six companies own all the, uh, uh, you know, the social media and the uh, and the communications, all the TV uh, mm-hmm. uh, shows, and they're just a few companies. So everything's. So these these guys love centralization, you know, whoever uh, they are. Right. So uh, the the point is that, uh, you know, we have uh, we have we have to be we have to be you know responsible for ourselves in terms of health. That means, you know, we, we get we get the knowledge about what's good for us, what's personally good for us. And we can't just depend. And, um, you know, everyone else telling us, uh, you know, in some centralized way, we can't go to the the outpatient place. You know, see, if we have to see our doctor, we have to see him. You know, if we have a problem, we have to we have to take care of it. But, uh, there's a lot of things that we can do that, um, you know, and the tendency right now is for decentralization to happen. Anybody that's going to it's like it's like a cur- Current that's very strong right now. I think it's the super trend of the 21st century is the decentralization, where we have um, an, em- uh, an em- emphasis now on the sovereign individual as opposed to just a few people at the top trying to control everything or manipulate everything. Um, and that's not just health. You know, I mean, we got big pharma. Remember, I remember when it used to be uh, oil was the biggest business in the in the world. Now it's big pharma. That's the biggest yep. business in the world. I mean, as far as do- amount of dollars that are the produced or revenue, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and Let's think so, about that for a second. Uh, how big oil is, Scott? Like, yeah. oil would involve motor oil. It would involve gasoline. It would involve diesel. It would also involve plastic. And any, anything plastic, which would be your carpet. You have synthetic fibers. If you're wearing synthetic clothing, Under Armour, all that stuff comes from crude oil and it's off-gassing in you. So it's like that's a massive injury. Mm-hmm. You think about all the synthetic clothing, all the synthetic bed sheets, all the, the paint in your house, the, the, the primers, the, the carpets, the laminate floors. I mean, crap, the oil industry is huge and Big Pharma is bigger than that. It's huge. Yep. Big that is that is centralization right there. Oil. Centralization of, of and uh, you know, yeah. And if you think about it, see, we have we have we need. 
It's not like we need to go and find new technologies. There, some of them are hidden, you know, from us. But a lot of them have been revealed in terms of, you know, the computer information, uh, you know, Velcro and all these other things that came out of uh, uh, research and, and, and maybe just uh, revelations, you know, from the yeah. military. Yeah. But, but, but the point is that we have all the technology we, that we need. If you look back, there's actually a film I saw on, I think it was YouTube or something a few years back. But they were taking it, it was uh, it was actually um, Henry Ford, you know, who who was the uh, father, you know, of mass production. Yeah. And he he had a, he had a, one of his Fords made out of uh, plastic that was made from soybeans. And he was taking a sledgehammer, you know, and hitting the, the side of the car and the, the hammer was bouncing off. It wasn't even cracking the thing. And so, you know, that plastic was tough. And if you look back at uh, like the B-17s and so on, all that plexiglass, that was made out of uh, soybeans. And, and and we can make plastic out of corn. I mean, it's just, you know, all the technology is there for us to have a completely recyclable world where we can have all the plastic we want made out of natural substances that will decompose back into uh you know, the soils or nature again, and, and just re we can recycle everything. So all the solutions are there. It's just a matter of of us implementing them. And well, like I said, this 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 whole centralization thing where the oil company says, no, I want to make, you know, we have to keep everything's got to be uh, made from oil, all the plastics and uh, candles and everything else is, you know, it's got to go. No, that's that's not not, not true at all. So uh just you know again the, the these guys the reason that they're starting to lose the battle now is is because of this tendency of, of uh decentralization it's not that we can just sit back and let that happen i mean it is going to happen no matter what in my opinion this is this this is the new um uh you know paradigm uh, for for our, our new age that we're we're coming into now but I, I'm, I'm just saying the trend. You can't fight the trend sometimes, right? And the, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and even financially, we have choices now. You know, we can do. We don't have to deal with a, a bank. I mean, I know some people that are just uh, living on crypto. You know, they, that's, that's the way they live, and they, whether they're in the United States or not. And there's people that are, you know, like uh, I'm in Texas. So in Texas and Utah, and I guess a couple other states. Gold and silver is legal tender. People are actually paying for things using gold coins, using silver dollars. Um, it's not a, worth a dollar anymore. It's a lot more. But the point is that, you know, we have these things that are that are emerging now that have to do with decentralization, the empowerment of the sovereign individual. And this is the this is the tendency. I mean, anybody that's fighting this tendency right now, they're the ones that are losing. They're the ones that are uh, you know, uh, slotted for, uh, 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 you know, uh, dissolution is what's going yeah, well, to, what's going to happen. I want to give my, uh, I want to give my two cents worth here on, on a, a couple of things. And, you know, obviously for the enrichers that are listening, you know, CSI financial group, we, we pride ourselves on the individual advisor, right? And we've built yeah. an entire platform for the individual advisor to go out there and compete against um, th those household names, if you will, Ameriprise, Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, yeah. right? And it's, it's, a, it's, very, it's a very competitive industry and they're all after all of those boomers that have reached that accumulation phase. And now it's time for the either decumulation or uh, preservation of their assets because they're reaching retirement age, right? So the individual advisor and the individual sovereignty that, um, that you're talking about, uh, Dr. Treadway, that, that's so important. But my two cents worth here as someone who actually, we homeschool our kids, the central planning that started right. was really with public school. That that was the, uh, what I, as far as I'm concerned, that's where all of these ideas stem from. That was the, the foundational approach, if you will, for control and centralizing thought and and, and having that thought of uh, that individual thought really be groupthink. And th those are the conditions that are happening right now. But 
it's sort of a double-edged sword as far as I'm concerned. And, and the reason why I think you're seeing such censorship with big tech is because the information is available and they know it's available. And what they do is they stymie that, that um, understanding and they want to make us almost feel like us, us individuals who know that we are responsible for our own actions. We're responsible for our own children. We're responsible for our own health, right? We have to take accountability. And what they want to do is they want to ultimately stymie that and not allow you to discern information, right? So they want to call it misinformation or disinformation, and they don't give us enough credit because they're like, well, we've been teaching you in public school already. We know you're not smart enough to know how to discern information. So we're protecting you for your own good. And they use that as a as a um, as a, a ruse, as far as I'm concerned, on being able to continue the centralization of thought and everything under these, you know, Viacom, CBS and Fox and big government, big pharma and big, and they're all in it together. Right. And, and here's the truth of the matter. We don't live in a capitalist society. We live in a crony capitalist society. And that's the, the biggest issue that most individuals who are in retirement that we try to help this is what we try to bring to them. We try to give them access to things that they are being, um, they're not being afforded to be able to have access to. And it's all because of the centralized planning, going back to what I was starting with, with K through 12, right? But the information, guess what? It's there. The internet allows us to know and learn things on our own and to be able to discern certain things ourselves without having to have somebody teach us on what we're supposed to know or guide us in that common sense that we were talking about before. And you mentioned it earlier in the first segment, Dr. Treadway, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I think that's a lot of yeah. things that happened. And I think that the, the same thing with the central planning and with you know um, public school and secondary school, that, that K through 12 system, that was started with a good idea, but that ultimately led to where we're at here today, which is why, paradigm shift, you know, parents, me and my wife, gorgeous wife sitting here right next to me right now, we decided to homeschool our kids. And what's interesting is that when all of this um, pandemic stuff started happening, it was amazing how many parents would started coming to us. Like, hey, how do you homeschool? By the way, there's homeschool and then there's schooling at home. Two totally different things. Right. So a lot of these public school kids that were being forced to live in front of the, the computer. And, and now, I mean, think about your son, ADD, being in front of a computer for six hours a day. Give me a break. That is not going to happen. So anyway, I, I just wanted to give my two cents worth about, you know, where, where I felt a lot of that centralization planning started was with, with conditioning kids from K through 12. And then that, that, that seeps into universities and colleges and professors and that are tenured and, and all of that, you know, re-education, if you will, or educating the way you want to be educated, as opposed to having critical thinking and having discussions and, and debates and being able to have both sides of the equation. I can remember in high school myself, wasn't that far, wasn't that long ago, we were forced to debate the other point. So that you can understand where the other person was coming from. It wasn't your stance. You had to fight for the stance of somebody else. And what that did is it helped to open your mind on understanding somebody else's point of view. Now it's like with, with the way the central planners are, it's like it's my way or the highway. Anyway, that's my two cents. Right. That's that, that's an actual, that's worth more than 100%. Um and, you know, I'm just remembering back, you know, in the 50s and stuff about the debates you just mentioned, and we would do the same thing. Uh, the funny thing was, I never remembered, even though we had civics classes and things like that, I never remember being taught about financial information. You know, they never told us how the Federal Reserve works, you know, how the financial system really works. That that was not part of our education. It was just left out. and. I'm sure it was left out on purpose, but uh, and and probably still is. And uh, and I have to, you know, congratulate you if you're doing the homeschooling. I 
I have a lot of friends doing the same thing and they're, they're really protecting their children and they're really giving their children a great education and letting them grow. Again, I think it's decentralization too, because you can't have this, you know, this, this, this idea of this core, um, you know, education program that they have in public schools. It's just, you know, like it's not universal. I mean, things are not universal for kids. That's what I'm trying to say. They're making it, trying to make it a universal program, so which is basically a propaganda program, in my opinion. But I think that you know, every 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 child, every person, you you and I and Tim, everybody is born with certain gifts, talents, and um, uh, abilities. You know, and we have those. They're, they're God given. You know, it's, it, and and thank goodness, we're all different because otherwise it'd be boring as heck, right? But the point is that we all have this, and that's what makes our society. You know, we're able to to give whatever talents and abilities that we have, and that uh, you know harmonizes us in the sense that then we can work with other people and get things that that we don't have talents in, or we don't have gifts for, and so. You know, the, the children are the same way, right? They they need to follow their self actualization, and you you know how can you follow self actualization and be who you are when you're just being given, you know, you're being spoon fed the same exact information that you know everybody's supposed to get in first grade, second grade, third grade, and move on and up, you know, the uh, the the scale through high school and and really not really learn anything. It's, it's no wonder that most of the kids get bored and don't even want to go to classes anymore because uh, they're not learning anything, you know. And they, they need to uh, to to have individual education. I think that's that that's the thing. It's just like everybody in health. Everybody has a different body type. You're all born with slightly different genetic makeups, and that's all. But everybody's fine. I mean, you know. As I said, diversity is a great thing, but at the same time, you want to be able to to uh, feed that diversity. In other words, uh, you want to be able to have your children uh, develop and self-actualize who they really are and what abilities and talents they really have. So I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's just wonderful. And again, I congratulate you for doing the homeschooling. Well, well, you know, and we, we've been doing that, um, for six or seven years now. So, I mean, way, way before, and our kids went to public school too. So they started out in private and then they went to public and then they went to homeschool and then they went back to public actually. And then they went back to homeschool because they just felt they were getting, you know, uh, better attention, better, you know, education. And, uh, so, so that was ultimately the decision that we, you know, made a, as a family, but, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, diversity. So many times you hear that word diversity and automatically you're thinking, well, the diversity of, of your skin color, right? That's, that's like what they're trying. But there's also diversity of thought that needs to be taken into consideration that never gets talked about. You know, in the, if it's the, if it's the Washington Post, which by the way, guess who owns the Washington Post? Speaking of consolidation, Jeff Bezos. Um, you know, you have you don't have any type of diversity of thought or critical thinking that's promoted um, because what they're what this goes back to what I was saying about central planning in school. They're trying to make, you know, all little boys who are like rambunctious and, and overzealous and, and they're full of energy. and everything. They're trying to make them all be little girls because it, I remember in school, the girls were the ones that were always, you know, prim and proper, and they they listened and they did what they were told, things like that. And boys, you know, were just, I don't know, rebellious by nature. And now I think what school is trying to do, that central planning school is trying to do, they're really trying to make all the little boys be like little girls. And then that goes back into the big farm and, uh, hey, your kid's ADHD and they need to be on this drug and they need to be calmed down and suppressed. And um, anyway, it, it's just uh, that, 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 ultimate decision that we made as as a family unit was uh to homeschool you know for the betterment of the future of our kids right those are individual things that we that we discussed but i want to talk just real fast that you know even your own family that you're the closest to and you love the most we don't always get along or always agree that's how different we are even though we're in the same house and we agree on most things together we don't always agree 
on the same exact thing. And these are the ones that are the closest to us. So, so obviously you're going to have differences with people that you have no idea about and vice versa. Right. So that's why I think it's critically important to try to have diversity of thought, to try to have an open discussion on resolutions and things of that nature. But if the central planners are determining on what's right and what's wrong and what's societally approved and disapproved or whatever. And now we've been conditioned because we've gone through the central planning K through 12 system. Well, it makes it a lot easier to control everybody's thought. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this decentralization, it's not only, you know, financial systems that's that are being decentralized. It's not only education. It's not only health. <clears throat> I mean, it's everything. Everything. I mean, I, I my belief is that slowly but surely, with this this uh, trend of decentralization, we're going to be coming towards. We may never get there, but we're going we're coming towards a, a more ideal society. When I when I say ideal society, I mean individualized, uh, individual centered society. So even media and communications. I mean, uh, we heard that. Uh, you know, Google and Facebook and Twitter are being sued now. And that, you know, there's this this movement because a lot of people are deplatformed. And, you know, it's there's a lot of unfairness going on where you, they're trying to, you know, suppress sort of basic rights, you know, freedom. And Well, let's and be clear on that, Scott, because Carter brought this up earlier. And we need to be crystal clear that <clears throat> it's not big tech that's censoring us. It's our own government laundering censorship through big tech. That's what's going big, on. Yeah. And we have yeah, proof because, in federal court right now submitted as evidence showing that. We have their playbooks. We have it. And if people want more information on this, they can go to winbackfreedom.com. That's winbackfreedom.com. Dr. Shiva has two lawsuits in federal court right now. He is fighting to get our First Amendment back because we've lost it. We don't have freedom of speech anymore. And you, everybody should go there and at least give him a dollar for moral support because he's going up against seven of the top attorneys in the world. So we're in a really this is like yeah. this is a historic it's, lawsuit. It's, it's funny how that it's funny how that works, you know, because it has to do with self interest. I mean, we all have self interest as individuals, but even corporations, in a sense, you know, because of their organizations and so on, they they have self interest too. And this this whole thing about you know. Like, OK, well, we're going to boycott Coca-Cola because we don't like what they're doing. Well, you know, people are voting with their dollars now. And that that that's another decentralization is that, you know, these these big corps and, and big or, or social media organizations, they're going to do what the people want. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It's just a matter of hearing that voice, you know, understanding what we want. And as soon as they do. They're going to change and they're going to serve us. They're going to serve what, you know, what the majority wants. And the majority wants what? Just as individuals, we all want happiness. We all want security. We all want freedom. And, uh, you know, it's it's very simple. And so, uh, you know, I think I think you're right, though. But uh, again, I think that, you know, we, we are riding this this boat down the river to this ocean of, of decentralization and, um, and, and, and any of these people that, that think they're going to win by that and trying to, you know, bolster the old paradigms, you know, they got another thing coming. I mean, it's not going to happen. And um, we should have said this earlier, so but the, the difference, yeah. the, the difference between centralization, centralization is where you've got big pharma, big tech, big government, big corporations controlling and consolidating all the flow of information, products and services. OK, so you have to go to them, serve the master. They tell you, here's what you're going to eat. Here's what you're going to drink. Here's the mutual funds you're going to do, you know, blah, 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 blah. The decentralization is direct and everywhere. This is where you walk down to the local farmer's market and you get a bag of turnips that the guy just and his wife just picked that morning. That's direct, right out of the ground, right there, boom, on the spot. And then then you look over there and then, oh, this 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 lady makes essential oils. Or this, like I was telling you guys earlier, I just sent Carter. There's this guy down at the beach in Astoria. He makes the most amazing soap. Like, I couldn't wait to go get my soap because I was about out again. And, dude, he's got this. They're all, like, edible. Like, and then people are like, what? Edible soap? Well, 
the whole point is, is that if you put something on your skin, you should be able to eat it. Otherwise, you shouldn't put it on your skin. That's a good rule for skincare products. If you can't eat it, do not put it on your skin because it will damage your body. It'll go into your immune system. It's toxins. This guy has wonderful, like this one I like has frankincense and myrrh in it. It's got this little scrub in it. And it's like, you can use it for shampoo. Women will love it for their hair. And it simplified my life. I don't need shampoo. I don't need conditioner. I just need this one bar of soap. I can take it with me everywhere. And it's good for me. That is direct and everywhere. That's what decentralization is. Direct uh, with the farmer, direct with the physician, direct with the person yeah. that's changing the car, the, the tires on your car. That's that's what decentralization is. Yeah, we, yeah, we you just take it out and take it out of your garden, you know. And I have, um, you know, I have a little garden. I get get my vegetables from. I love it. It's great. That's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Decentralized. I'm not going to be dependent on. Well, yeah, well, again, and, and you know what that is so, uh, and what that is and really what the theme of the show will be, especially whenever, uh, you know, the enrichers who aren't listening to it right now, listen to it, uh, you know, Apple podcast, Spotify, uh, make sure you guys subscribe and everything. But it's going to be a paradigm shift, a true paradigm shift. But the irony of it is it's actually a paradigm shift back to your common sense and your beliefs and your freedom that really everybody and it's you know it's interesting you were just talking dr treadway about you know everybody wants freedom and and i don't know if that's true unfortunately i don't think everybody wants freedom i think people are afraid to have freedom because then they're gonna have to take responsibility and have accountability and you know with freedom right comes uh, you know choices you have to make and unfortunately <laughs> i'm sorry going back to the central planners k through 12 you know they they Basically, we're like, hey, we'll make the decisions for you. Well, that's just laziness and people. It's the rebels that ultimately, it, like myself in school, we didn't get bored so much as it was just like we want to think our own way. We don't want to be told what to do. Right. The most rebellious people that, uh, who become entrepreneurs. Right. And I, I was just resharing something on Facebook not too long ago. There was a study done of valedictorians that go out. And they go into the real world. And guess what? The ones who actually make the most revenue and the most uh, impact on society and the, become the most innovative aren't your valedictorians. They were your kids who average C's in school. Those are your entrepreneurs. Yeah. Those are the free thinkers. And guess a what? Of, a lot of times, lot of times the reason they had C's, they had C's because they were bored. <laughs> totally. That's exactly right. So, so anyway, the, the I, I know point, we're going to go into uh, segment three here and everything. So, but I, so the, so the point is, is if your kids are getting C's, get excited. That's right. You got it. So, Hey, what are you doing? You getting those A's you spending too much time in them books, get your butt outside and get some sunshine, Play get some birds. sunshine and get some real world experience on you. Yeah. Go, go to the neighbor's house and say, Hey, I see you got a dead tree over there. Want me to cut that tree up and make a yeah. stack of firewood for you? How much would you pay me? Right. <laughs> There, there we go. go. All right, guys, we're going to take another quick yeah. break. When we get back, since, um, um, you know, probably Carter, well, I don't know, Carter and I, uh, since I learned from Dr. Treadway, we usually flip the script and then the guest asks me health questions. So we thought it would be fun. We're going to have Carter ask Dr. Treadway and me health questions, but mostly focus on, focus on Dr. Treadway. So when we get back, we're going to flip the script. Carter gets to ask Dr. Treadway anything he wants about health. We'll be right back. You want the absolute best for yourself, and you want it to be easy. That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical-free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line, Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. What's up, Health Heroes? Tim James here with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. And again, we've got uh, Dr. Scott Treadway in the house. Um, he is our formulator over here at Chemical Free Body. 
and he has his own uh, company called Meta Organics, and he has another company that helps um, other people like me uh, develop high quality supplement brands. So if anybody out there would like to make some supplements, yeah, just get a hold of us, or we'll put Dr. Tread, we'll put your information down at the bottom where people can at least your email and they can reach out to you if they're interested in that. So, all right, so now it's time to flip the script. We're going to talk, we've been talking about more about health. Um, so, um, mm. Go ahead, Carter. You have any like uh, qu health questions for Doctor Treadway? Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I, I'm actually very interested in learning more about all of the different things that you do, um, Doctor Treadway. But you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about, if if you don't mind, and I know Tim and I have maybe talked about this in the past about you know just how important you know, getting out in the sun and getting exposure and fresh and clean air and everything. And, and if, if you don't mind, uh, you know, there, there's so much, we'll just call it information, right? And I was talking earlier about, you know, disinformation or misinformation or being able to discern your own information. But I really do want to, to find out from your perspective on, you know, I've been a no mask person for a long time because I always, you know, I'm, I, I, I believe I was, you know, born in the image of God. And if we needed to have actual mask over our face, we'd have been born with mask over our face. I know that we have different things in, in our nose and everything to help to uh, with things to get in your body or, or exclude them from getting in your body. But I do want to kind of get an idea on, you know, how bad can mask be with whether oxygen levels and I've read a lot of different things but from your perspective on uh you know on wearing a mask and, and not wearing a mask especially for kids yeah um that's a great that's a great question um so I mean uh, I, I'm kind of like you I mean I, I go in uh well here in Texas pretty pretty much everything is open now no masks anywhere but um so I was I was always going around without one anyway. <laughs> but the point is that um, uh, masks are, are are bad. They they don't work. I mean, there's no science that's showing that masks help anybody do anything. And it could be you know that if you're having an operation, obviously you know the, the surgeon wears a mask, and that helps keep bacteria away and that kind of thing. If we're talking about like the pandemic and viruses. No, it doesn't work. There's no science that the viruses don't penetrate right through the mask. So they're absolutely useless. Not only are they useless, they're very harmful. Because um, tests have been, where masks have been sent in that, that kids have worn, uh, for example. And uh, they're just full of bacteria. And so you're breathing in this bacteria. You're actually accumulating. If it's an adult or a child, you're accumulating the bacteria inside of the mask. It's very, very unhealthy because it, it tends to create a whole film of bacteria inside the mask that you're breathing over and over again. Not only that, you're not getting enough oxygen. A lot, most masks, they, they uh, reduce the oxygen level by tw about 20%. Um, and we need oxygen. We're not... Uh, you know, uh, we're not plants, you know, we, we have to have oxygen, you know, plants use CO2. So what we breathe out that's toxic, the plants, they think that's wonderful, you know, and what they breathe out, which is oxygen, we like that, that's oxygen, and we need that for life. So masks are, are not only totally use, useless, and there's no science behind it at all, not even from CDC, not from anybody, they're all just quiet, you know, they're just saying, uh, you know, wear a mask, you know, wear two masks, wear three masks, whatever, uh, just to, uh, I think maybe is part of some kind of an agenda that, uh, you know, to get you used to obeying uh, somebody that doesn't know anything and, uh, and thinks it's a good idea. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. master are and, um, and, danger and, and dangerous and dangerous. And so, yeah. And something else I wanted to mention, we were, talking at the end, and I like what you said, uh, Carter. And But, you know, the whole idea of health, um, the, what's the purpose of health? I mean, really, what are we here for? You know, we're here to pursue happiness. We're here to have the freedom. Of, we have to have the freedom to pursue that happiness. 
And so that's something common in every human being. And if we're not healthy, there's no way to be happy. It's impossible. You know, otherwise we're just dealing with ill health all the time. And we, you know, we can't, we can't do anything. So the purpose of health really is for our evolution. It's for us, our individual evolution, our individual spiritual progress, our happiness and our pursuit of happiness. So I think that's just like a general thing. But when it comes to masks and all this stuff and sticking swabs up your nose and, and doing all the things that they're doing, um, it's just it's just a waste of time. I mean, the funny thing was when I went to uh, uh, I had to go to India for a little while and it was very difficult to to go there because uh, they have all these restrictions. I, I'm talking about a few months ago I went and they had all these covid restrictions and you had to have a test before you left and you have to have a test when you came in. And then before you left India, you had to have another test. And the guy was in a hazmat suit and he was sticking things up my nose and. You know, uh, it was just uh, it was just like overkill, you know, just total overkill. And uh, and, you know, where is it's, this coming it's fear. from? Where's it's the proof? fear. Where's the it's fear. Okay. It's all fear. I haven't, the, I haven't seen any scientific proof. You know, I tend to be a, a, a scientist. You know, you just show me the proof of the thing. If it works, then that's fine. You know, if you if you can show me some proof. But there's basically no proof for masks. There's no proof for vaccines. No proof for anything that these these uh, uh, people are doing to us, you know, the the, the central planners, as you say. Yeah. Um, and it's just all about, you know, trying to get you used to some kind of obedience so that you can lose your freedom. Man, there's no way. I'm not, I'm not going to lose my freedom. I'm going to do what I know is right. It's good for my health. That's just it. Waterboarding. So one thing, Carter, too, to add to this yeah. is that there is science out there. What we really should focus on, which <clears throat> if you want to, and then I want to go to the deeper issue, which is um, when you put a mask on your mouth, you are reducing the amount of oxygen into the body. Okay, we are going to see a massive outbreak of cancers and other diseases from 2020 for mask breathing. I was boots on the ground. I was talking to people. People were getting acne. They were getting headaches. They weren't feeling good. But systems biology reveal that masks actually disrupt our oral microbiome. So those mouth bacteria, there's about 700 of them that live in our mouth. They're part of our um, um, innate immune system, and our, which is part of our protection. As, as stuff comes into our mouth, they're there to kind of do things. Well, when you put a mask on, you're actually raising the temperature, your, the oral temperature in your mouth, and you're creating a higher acidic environment. What does that do? Well, three of the bacteria in the mouth, uh, one of them being gingivitis, explodes in growth because of the higher acid levels. So you're disrupting the natural balance of your oral microbiome of you and your child. And what's happening is these bad bacteria are taken off. In result, dentists are re reporting an increasing oral health issues, specifically gum disease, tooth rotting, and tooth cracking. 50% increase in rotting teeth. So the question now is like, um, and in and, and, and your child's oral microbiome is a development predictor of your child's future health. So you are going to screw your child up for life's immune system for life if you put a mask on them. So this is true science. And it's just like it probably just come and makes sense. But the, the, the real debate here is because people some people are pro mask. Some people are anti mask. If you're listening and you're wearing a mask and you're sh you're shrugging your shoulders and you're getting mad with what we're saying here. Or maybe you're going, wow, this is really cool. The reality is, is that you put a mask on you and your child because you believe in health. You believe in good health. That's why you're putting it on because you're in your mind, you're thinking, so this is a good thing. You're not a bad person. You're trying to protect yourself, protect your child. And a lot of people are wearing a mask to protect others. There's lots of good, decent people out there. But like you said, Scott, there's no real science and it's not common sense when you really boil it down. Now, there's people on the other side that are pro mask or, or excuse me, anti mask because they have the information, the knowledge, and they're just not going to do it, or they, do, they don't feel well when they're on it. But the real issue is not mass. The real issue is that big pharma making single molecule drugs, they're going out of business, okay? This is the root. Most people don't know this. Look at Pfizer, 2011 till um, last year, they're down $22.4 billion in revenue. They are going out of business. Single molecule drugs are very expensive. It takes uh, up to $5 billion in 13 years to get that stuff 
to go through animal trials. They kill a bunch of animals, then phase one, phase two, phase three, clinical trials on humans. And then eventually, okay, we can sell it. Well, they patent that sucker and they got a 20 year patent life, but it might take them about 13 years to get that approved, to get it out to the market. They've only got seven years of patent life left. And guess what? Most of their big money makers, they're running out on patents. So big pharma is tanking. They're going out of business just like big banks were. Remember back then when big banks were going down? Carter, you know. Yep. And then, and then um, so what happened? Well, they needed a savior. Big Pharma needed a savior. What was the savior? Operation Warp Speed. Because the Big Pharma is moving into, into um, in, uh, jabs because they're, they're growing at 17% a year. Vaccines industry growing at 70%. Good business. And guess what? Thanks to the Kennedys and the 1986 Vaccine Act, you can't sue a vaccine manufacturer. You can set, you can sue a single molecule big pharma drug manufacturer, but big pharma, it's it's beautiful. They don't need 13 years of testing and five billion dollars. Operation warp speed, one year, boom, to market, not tested, no animal testing, phase one, phase two, phase three. Screw all that. We're just gonna go right to market. And um, and and we're gonna just start jabbing this stuff into us. I mean, it makes no sense. So unfortunately, President Trump did what Obama did to big banks. Obama bailed out the big banks. Trump has bailed out big pharma. And then I found that Trump actually got a million dollar donation from Pfizer and so did uh, Joe Biden when he went into office. Now Biden's pushing through what Trump brought in with this Operation Warp Speed. So the real crime scene here is not masks or the big problem. The root problem is big pharma's going out of business. They needed they need to be saved and vaccines and politicians are are saving them. And they're trying to use fear to get around 60 to 70 percent of us to take a, uh, you know, twenty dollar, forty dollar um, vaccine so they can make their 20 bucks per person and increase their revenues and save and save themselves. That's the reality. Well, right? I was just I was just having a conversation with um, my wife, you know, last night. And, you know, you, you plenty of memes out there and plenty of information again. Um, and, but we were talking about. Uh, as we're sitting at our local country club, having a drink last night, uh, you know, just enjoying each other's company, you know, the, the restaurant's full, no one's wearing a mask and everything. Uh, even probably two weeks ago, they finally stopped forcing the employees to wear a mask, which there was no common sense to that. Like, wait a second, all the members can come in, not wear a mask, no problems, but the employees have to wear a mask. It's such a facade. I digress. The point being is that there is nobody on the face of the planet that if a real pandemic was happening around you, you that if that you saw it, you wouldn't have to convince them that it was happening. They would see it with their own eyes. I'm thinking about my community that I live in, very close, tight knit community, right? Which means we're interacting with one another all the time. It's not as if you're hearing these stories or seeing all this stuff. It's just it's all it's all just a big facade. And the the simple fact that it's a sales pitch, right? I'm in sales. I get it, right? We're being sold this idea that we have this pandemic going on that's all around us and you got to do your part. And it's just a constant over and over. You wouldn't have to do that if it was really happening. Anybody with common sense could see it with their own eyes or had been personally affected by it from some at some level, right? So anyway, that that's the biggest issue that I have on... Um, you know, the mask, no mask, or get the jab, don't get the jab, or whatever the case may be. It's still it's a personal choice uh, from for me, and we take individual responsibility. But I'm not responsible for my wife's health even, right? She's responsible for her own health. We can influence it. And we can give, you know, affirmation or, or positive, you know, reinforcement on whatever the case may be. And, you know, we all have our own confirmation bias, and I understand that. But... You know, my my question going back to the whole mask, no mask was I wanted to know what the science is. Right. I know that we've done our own um, Petri dish uh, examples of our own mask. Go into the store, wearing it for 20 minutes, come back, Petri dish. And then you look at it. and You're like, oh, science tells me there's a bunch of shit on this mask that you don't want to breathe in. Right. But for some reason, we're being told that this. What I consider placebo effect of that that safety that's really harming more people. And not only that, it's giving this unrealistic, you know, 
safety net around your face that really isn't helping you, but you have been conditioned to think that it does protect you, and that's why you wear it. And you said it just now, Tim. Good people make bad decisions for good reasons, right? It doesn't make them a bad person. They just make they just they the the informed consent. And the problem is when you have the central planners that are basically telling you because surely they couldn't be that nefarious, right? Tim, they couldn't be that nefarious to not actually tell me that the mask could be bad for me. Well, the the bottom line, dude, is like, you know, the solution isn't like having a sign using my tax dollars, all of our tax dollars, everybody's tax dollars here listening. The big signs up that say is get your vaccine. It's, 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 it's safe. It's effective, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're, these things are everywhere. They're giving away free lottery tickets to get the vaccine. Beer companies are giving away a free beer to get the vaccine. They're, they're doing all these, like you said, sales taxes to get, get somebody to go in and, and get a vaccine. And it, 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 that's, that's not the solution. Okay. The real problem is, and the solution is not a vaccine. It, the real pro, the real solution is right medicine at the right time for the right person. But how do we get there? We have to understand that it's it's infrastructure that built good health. And the, and the real problem is that we have poor health in this country. And there's a lot of places around the world now that have followed suit with Western medicine and the standard American diet. People's health is crumbling. Half of us are dropping dead of heart attacks. The other half are dropping dead of cancer. You know, diabetes is on the rise. It's not a disease. It's lifestyle choices. We have all these health issues and complications. 30% of our children are obese. I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid. Okay. Little kids should not be weighing, you know, as much as they do. It almost, I was swimming last week, um, going back to Fort Legrand in this uh, place called Arlington. There's a little pool. And three, two girls walked down, probably eight and 11, and they weighed more than I did. Okay. And I'm like, they're not going to be around that long. This is, child abuse and it's 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 horrible like I, and then this other little boy was had a huge stomach on him when he jumped in i was just like he could barely swim but he was trying to, he was a little kid and he was playing and i'm like god dang it man this kid is going to suffer he is not going to have a good life he's not going to live that long and his quality of life is going to suck and now he won't be able to express his art his crafts his entrepreneurialism his helpfulness his you know therapist whatever he's going to be to help people his highest excitement, he's not going to be able to realize that because he does his vehicle that's going to get him there is broken down, weighed down, and having all these issues. So we have to look at what's the real the real problem is not masks. The real problem is that we have poor health and we are being forced to take single molecule drugs and vaccines. And that's not the solution. The solution is boosting the immune system and cleaning up our infrastructure. We need clean. Uh, we need good sanitation. We need clean water. We need clean food. And in the end, if we're, if we're going to make this all work, we need clean elections. So this all boils back down to people getting off their butts and becoming part of a working class movement again. I mean, that's that's the only solution. We really need to talk about this, guys, because if you look at the turn of the century, 14 out of 100,000 people were dying of uh, uh, measles, an example. Right. They got we got pictures. I mean, people are dying of measles and it's like a big thing. Now you got to get your MMR vaccine, you know, and and you look at that and you're like, wow, you got to get the vaccine. But if you look at the measles, 1900, 14 out of 100,000 are dying. You go to the mid 50s, 97 percent of the measles was gone. It was handled. The measles vaccine didn't come until 1963. So was it the vaccine that, that knocked out measles? No. What was it? It was the women's labor movement that got that got the, the sanitation worker and the plumber and cleaned up the urine and the feces in the streets and got the dead goats and the cows and the dead horses out of the water system. And that infrastructure is what created and it boosted our health. Right. Because if you go out in nature, people people urinate and defecate or, you know, animals poop in the woods. And then it goes back into the soil and it's this beautiful thing. But when you put a whole bunch of people in a small area or a whole bunch of cattle or sheep in a small area or pen, what happens to the grass? It turns into mud and urine and feces. And then in comes the rats, the bugs, the bacteria, the E. coli, the salmonellas. And then this is what happens in the streets. Women recognize this. They got that shit literally cleaned up. And then our health and the infrastructure um, our, our health skyrocketed, our income skyrocketed, and all this stuff. So we got to get back to infrastructure. And if people look, our infrastructure today is a D minus. 
in the United States. D minus, we are becoming a third world country. Our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, our water systems. Look at the water in the school. It's even worse now because we have lead pipes. Like, guys, I'm doing saunas right now, and every day heavy metals are coming out of me. Heavy metals in my towel, gray spots. I got this new wow. sauna. I don't know, Scott, I told you about it. You're not really into saunas, but the, the whole thing is, is like, we are getting polluted at so many levels. And the solution is we have to go back and we have to strike again and say no more. We're not going to wear the mask. Hey, we're not going to work. You're not going to give us good wages. We're done. You know, up till from 1940 to 1970, over 200 million Americans striked. When, when, the, when, the, when the Republicans in the 1970s started branding working class movements as communism, the, Repu the Democrats came in and they created the labor unions and they stifled our strikes and our labor, our true labor movements with these, you know, um, you know, these, uh, these labor unions. And, and since then, there's only been about 2 million people that have striked. And guess what? As soon as we stopped striking, our incomes went down and our health started going down. So what does that mean? Like you guys both said, everything revolves, our health is up to us. If you want health, you got to take care of yourself. You got to find, you got to get good foods, clean. You got to move yeah. your body. You got to do these things. If you want clean, clean uh, um, food, you got to make sure that happens. If you want clean elections, you got to make sure that happens. You want freedom, then you got to fight for it. It ain't free. And we have millions of people that have spilled their blood before us to have this opportunity in front of us. And it's slipping out of our hands right now. And I'm really frustrated about it. So the good news is, is that we hold all the cards. We have all the power. We just have, it's working people unite. That's the key. We need to unite again and just say no and um, stand up for this. And everything's going to change for us. We're either going to go into the dark ages or we're going to go into the golden ages. But the choice is ours. Yeah, we're going into the golden age. The, uh, I mean, we have to detox daily. Like you said, Tim, that's, that's really important. Because we're surrounded, we're living in an ocean of, of, uh, of contaminants. And the thing is, it's, all, all, it's just about information. If we have the information, we're, we're good, we're free. Because uh, the beginning of this pandemic, the info came out, you know, hydrochloroquine. I mean, we have cures for this pandemic. I mean, vitamin C is enough to kill that virus. Uh, it's just, it's simple. We don't have to have uh, all this uh, vaccinations and all this. You know, it's just a matter of uh, um, like some of the people that, that came to me during the beginning of the pandemic. I just gave them MMS. Now, hydrochloroquine is the same thing. It's similar to MMS, if you've heard of that. And uh, it works for a lot of things. Mainly it works for uh, malaria, for uh getting rid of all these, any kind, almost any kind of virus, any kind of flu. And so all the answers are there. You know, we just need the information. Well, I just saw um, uh, Trump came out and did a video and I haven't watched his videos in a while. And for those listening, I was a huge Trump supporter. I donated, I, I was boots on the ground. I did stuff. And um, when I, well, it's just frustrating. I, I He had a video and he was talking about, I did this right. I was right on this. He goes, and I was right about hydroxychloroquine. It works. I was right. And then one minute later, he said, if it wasn't for me, this would have been another 1917 flu pandemic. I did Operation Warp Speed. I forced the FDA to skip all this testing. And I bought the, I literally out of his words, word for word, I purchased the vaccines before they were even proven safe because and if I wouldn't have done that, nobody would have been getting vaccines right now. I've saved millions of people. I'm thinking now for most people listening, they might have just took that in. But for me, I'm thinking, wait a minute. One minute ago, you said hydroxychloroquine works. Yep. But, but now you're telling me that we have to all do these vaccines. I'm like, you are bailing out Big Pharma. That's what you did. And you got a million dollars from Pfizer. And he got some other money from other companies, too, But for his campaign. But the point is, is that. These people talk out of both sides of their mouth. They're very yeah. smart. They're what's called the not so obvious establishment. They're people that you think that are for you and they give you the optics that they're doing things. And they have done some good stuff. But like Dr. Shiva told me, he said, look, Tim, um, you know, wife beaters, um, you know, they might take their wife out to dinner once in a while or, or buy them a present on their birthday. But at the end of the day, they still hit their wife. Right. Yeah. So we have to take off these rose colored glasses and look at for what people are actually doing and what they're saying. And their actions, their actions speak so loudly, I can't hear what they say is how I'm looking at it. 
So this is a, you know, it's very was, frustrating uh, when people are being misled like this. I was. Oh, you're right. I was in Mexico the other day, um, mm. not the other day, but a couple of weeks ago, because uh, it's not too far from here. And um, I, 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 went, I went over the border. So I walked into a, a pharmacy and I just asked them, I said, do you have any hydrochloric one? You know, I'd like to stock up on and they had it over the counter. It was right there, like aspirin, you know, because so it's a, it should be an OTP thing. We should have that. We should have all that. In our our drugstores should be stocked with all these, these, these cures, and uh, and they're not. Yeah, and so, that, that and that's a big uh, pharma. You know, just, that's a big pharma made product. But it's sixty eight years old. But guess what? The patents run out on it. It's generic. There's no profit in it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Military's been using it for 65 years. You know, if they if they have to send some troops or, or contingents to South America where there's a lot of malaria, they always take that. It always works. I mean, it's been around, you know, you know, forever. And there's there's other kinds of things like the MMS that's been around forever. And so it's all it's all simple. It's just a matter of information. And uh, you know, as soon as we get, uh, uh, you know down the road further in, in, in terms of this transition. Uh, I mean, it's coming out today. We're talking about it, right? So um, I think everybody's going to have this information eventually. So, so yeah. we're, you going know, the, we're going the right direction. It, it's a lot slower than I thought it would be. I mean, a lot of people thought, you know, the, okay, this is, this is happening. And now the army is going to come out and take care of everything. Right. You know, that never happened. And because it's bottom up, why why is it not happening? It's because it's you and me, buddy. You and me, we're the ones that are going to change everything. It's it's the individual that's going to change everything. It's not going to come from the top down, you know, from some uh, some magical monarch who who's who's uh, benevolent. That's that's not going to. It's going to be you and me to change the world, yeah. and. Uh, that's okay with me, even if it takes longer, because I think it'll be permanent. Well, I, I hope you're right. So, um, well, Dr. Treadway, I want to uh, thank you for not only your, your time, but also, you know, all the, the freedom loving things that you do to uh, effectuate and make your community that you're, you're serving. Obviously you were in India. Um, I know not too long ago, and I know that ultimately it really is about the health. And, and I know we've said it on this show many, many times. We said it today, the wealth and the amount of money in your pocket are mad. They matter not if you don't have your health, right? So, so they are. And the reason why Tim and I started the health and wealth podcast um, is because they are interconnected. They are effectively one in the same. You've got to have both of them and you've got to have a nice balance between the two of them if you want to have some nice longevity. So, um, Tim James, I really do appreciate you being able to have Dr. Treadway come on as our guest today. The enrichers are definitely enriched more from the information that he's been able to share with us today. Thank you for taking my question and, and expanding upon it, both of you. And I, I really just, I, I applaud what, what both of you are doing. I believe in what it is that both of you are doing. Um, you know, this really is being able to help the individual out and give them access and options to be able to, to make their lives uh better lived, right? I mean, it's, it's one thing to, to live. It's another thing to have a quality of life, right? So, so those are the things that proactively, and we talk about planning all the time, right? We have to proactively plan. Well, that includes your health. You have to proactively do things that make you a healthier person for longevity down the road. So it's, uh, yeah, we, we don't know, we, we don't know how long we're going to live. No, but nobody knows that. But we do know that we want quality, quality, quality of life right to the end, and uh, and and I appreciate what you're doing as well, Carter, and of course Tim, and it's just been a real pleasure being with you guys. Uh, I, I just I love like-minded people like you, and to talk to you, and I I know your audience is uh, is uh, uh, awake and and, and uh, supportive of all these. Uh, freedoms and and basic human rights and it's just a wonderful thing to, uh, yeah. to be in touch with you 
Yeah, absolutely. Our, our pleasure. Tim, what do you do you have anything left before we Yeah, uh, so you just stuff? you just got some cobwebs out of my head. So I remember you ever guys ever listen to Jim Rohn? He was kind of one of Tony Robbins' mentors. Of course. He said that if you don't have your own plan, you're gonna be part of somebody else's plan. Guess what somebody might have planned for you? Not much. Not much. So we have to have our own plan. We have to have our own plan for our health. We can't just be like, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? Uh, pizza, you know, KFC. Guess what they've got planned for you in that in those goods and services? Not much, right? Your, your financial. Well, I put it off. I don't want to deal with it, whatever. I don't want to do a will. Or if I do a will, I, I don't want to do a trust. I don't, I don't understand those things. I don't need a trust. I'm not a multimillionaire. Guess you don't have a plan for that stuff. Guess what's going to happen to your assets? The state has a plan for your assets. Yep. It, 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 you it, and guess what they have planned for your assets? Not much, right? That's, exa that's exactly so, right. Yeah, we we definitely have to take full responsibility for all aspects <laughs> of our lives. And when we do this, everything transforms for us. And those interconnections. And if all of us are doing that, that's what that's how we have strong families, strong communities, strong nations, and a strong world. We just have to come together. Working people uniting again is the answer. Yeah, strong humanity and a strong immunity are pretty important mm -hmm. yeah and again i will say this if people want to learn more and become part of a, a movement there's you can go to winbackfreedom.com and like i said chip in with dr uh, shiva's movement we get behind his lawsuit he's the tip of the spear for us for everything that we want everything that we hold dear our entrepreneurialism our taxes our health everything is holding in the balance of this freedom of speech if we don't have freedom we can't have open debate and discourse and we can't move freely you know, just flying and driving places, you know, people can come in through the border unfettered, but it's going to come to the point where we have check states going from state to state. And that's, you know, with the masks and all this stuff. And, and he, heed my words, like what they're going to do is like, they, they come in, they put the mask, they lock you down and they kind of loosen it up a little bit. Then they lock you down again. Now they're kind of loosening up, expect that they're going to do more lockdowns. There's going to be more quote unquote strains developing new vaccines that they have to get you. It's going to keep being more and more vaccines, more vaccines, more vaccines, no talk about health, no talk about the immune system, no talk about our D minus infrastructure that actually builds our health. And it's going to be more lockdowns, more masks. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So be prepared for this. This is what's coming. Um, if we don't get up and start striking again and saying no. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Well, um, for my co-host, Tim James of Chemical Free Body uh, and our wonderful guest today, Dr. Scott Treadway, uh, we will make sure that we have the information about his uh, company and, and supplements and, and how to be able to get in contact with him to learn more about how he can be able to help with your health. Uh, I am Carter Wilcox and CEO and founder of of CSI Financial Group. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast on anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and then you can also go to our website for all of our recordings, for all of our previous shows at the health and wealth podcast show.com. That's the health and wealth podcast show.com. Uh, thank you, Enrichers, for joining us again today. Dr. Scott Treadway, thank you again so much. And uh, everybody have a fantastic rest of your day or evening. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Enrichers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies. So tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.